To be honest, this Honda Shama 21 is going to be my daily driver. That is how much I like this laptop. It's compact, it works well, it's pretty zippy, and I love it so much. And I really think that this is the best form factor for portability slash, you know, um, usability as well. All right, let's talk build quality. This thing is a metal laptop. The entire thing is made of metal, and I have to say that it's fairly well built. And the best thing about the Onda Shama 21 is that the metal is solid enough that it doesn't feel like it's going to break, and it feels very solid, very tough, um, at least compared to, for example, the Xiaomi Air 12, which is, uses a very light metal that really makes you, you know, tend to baby it more. This one, you can be, you know, more careless with it. You can throw it onto your bed. You can throw it onto a couch and you really don't have to worry too much about it, which is something that's very nice. And the other thing as well is that I really think that a 12 inch form factor is the ultimate combination of um, portability to um, usage. For example, if you have a, now probably my favorite thing about the Honda Shama 21 is that I really think that the 12.5 inch form factor is really the, perfect combination between portability and usability, just like the MacBook 12. Here I have the Honor Xiaomi 21, and here I have the Tech Class F7, which is a 14-inch laptop. So we're going to open the Xiaomi 21 first, and you can see there, um, this is so portable, it's, it's amazing. And then you have the Tech Class F7, which is actually pretty portable as well, but to be honest, it's just a lot more unwieldy to use the Tech Class F7 than it is to use the Honda Shama 21, just because of how big the laptop is. It feels a lot more unwieldy than what you have here. With this, you can you know carry it around almost like a tablet, whereas this is a full-fledged laptop, and you have to kind of treat it as such also. If you are a person who wants a big laptop, the Honda Shama 21 is not for you, obviously, but if you are deciding what form factor you want and you want something that's portable 12.5 inches i highly recommend it 12.5 inches in my opinion is the perfect compromise so i really recommend 12.5 over something like a 14.4 even a 13.3 if it's not like a dell xps 13. in terms of aesthetics the Honda shama 21 is pretty plain nothing on the top it's just gold which i know some people hate and on the bottom all you have are the four rubber feet you have your on the logo as well as a m2 ssd slot also and here you have a very good selection of ports. You have a USB port, and you also have your micro SD card slot. And on the other side, you have another USB port, a micro HDMI, as well as a USB-C, but no headphone jack, which is going to be a deal breaker for a lot of people. And I have to say that I don't use headphone jack. I'm, I'm everything Bluetooth, so I'm fine. But if you need a headphone jack, do not buy the Honda Shama 21. The last weird thing about this port is this is the micro SD card slot. I have a micro SD currently inside. And as you can see, the micro SD actually sticks out a little bit. You're going to one to two millimeters from the actual body itself, which it means that if you accidentally hit, for example, I'm, I'm going to try doing it right now. I'm going to hit this. There, see, it came out. All I had to do was press on this onto the ground and this thing popped out. That's one problem. I really don't know why they didn't make this flush with the body itself because now this can pop out if you put it inside a bag. Annoying, but not a deal breaker in my opinion. I'm going to open up the lid now and you will see that the lid doesn't actually open too far. That's maybe like 120 degree incline, whereas most other lids actually open to maybe kind of like this which is actually a much better, it's, it's much easier to use if you can open it wider. But for this, this is the maximum you can open it and anything more and you're gonna break the hinge. So it's really not too wide of a hinge and I don't like it, I would prefer it to be a bit wider, but I can live with it because it's not a deal breaker unlike the headphone jack, which I know it will be for some of you guys. The keyboard and trackpad here are okay. This is the plastic keyboard and the key travel is pretty good. Um, it is a tiny bit harder to type on this than say the Xiaomi Air 12. Um, you do have to hit some keys a tiny bit harder, but that's really not a deal breaker. The thing that I really don't like are the arrow keys here. This one's like these two are really small and they feel a little bit mushy, honestly, compared to the other bigger ones, which I have a feeling could be related to how small these keycaps are. The other thing as well is I like how there's three button, um, th three lights here for your on, uh, caps lock and num lock, as well as your power button that's off the keyboard, which is something that other, you know, um, laptops don't do. Finally, this trackpad here is a little bit short. It's very wide, which is okay. It's a bit short. And the thing about the trackpad is that it's it's either too fast or too slow. So um, when, when you're doing two finger scrolling, it's either too fast or too slow, which can get annoying. The figure bit sensor here works very well. Here, watch this. Bam, that's good. All right, let's take a look at the display here. This is a 1080p IPS LCD. And I gotta say that this is a pretty good display. 
it looks good. Um, I will say that when you, I'm, I'm recording, I have to turn the um, shutter speed down because there is some flickering, um, some PWM, I think. But as you can see, the colors and saturation on this display are excellent. Just look at how pink the um, flamingo's feathers are. And take a look at the detail on this bird's uh, feathers. They, they just look absolutely amazing. And the separation between the background and foreground is actually pretty good as well. I really like this display. I really like it for watching TV shows especially. Um, reading comics is, is a little bit hard on this laptop because of how wide and not tall it is, which is the wrong form factor for comics. But I have to say that this is, again, good display, good for you know browsing the web, reading some news. Um, all in all, I really enjoy this. Maximum brightness is pretty good as well, but I wanna show you something that's kind of annoying sometimes. When I wanna change maximum brightness, um, it does work, but it takes a long time. So if I do this, well, I guess this, this, this one actually works well, but in certain apps, when I'm um, trying to, let's say, watch TV, and I wanna change the brightness, you'll see that it, what? I'm so confused. When I was using it, it wouldn't change auto, like instantly, but now it does. But anyway, there's some times where the brightness will not change instantly when I click on the brightness setting. It'll take maybe like five or 10 seconds for it to catch up. It'll always change, but it'll take, take a long time. So that's one thing for you to be aware of. Maximum brightness is actually pretty good. I cannot use it in direct sunlight. It, it's too dim for that. But if you're in a cloudy environment, you can see it. It's a tiny bit hard, but it's still like usable in you know out, outdoors. All right, let's talk audio. The audio here is the weakest part and it's honestly pretty crappy. You don't have any speakers here. The speakers are actually located kind of like right there. And when they fire, they kind of bounce up against this hinge and come up towards you or through the keyboard. And the worst thing about this is actually not the quality. The, the quality is pretty bad, don't get me wrong. But the worst thing is the volume. It doesn't even get loud, which kind of sucks because you pretty much cannot use it unless you are in a completely silent environment. So even if this is completely, you know, the volume is completely turned up, you still can't hear it very well. So let me uh, play this clip and let you hear what it sounds like. All right, so let's talk battery life of this laptop. And I've got to say, I am incredibly impressed with um, how good the battery life is in this laptop. So let me um, talk a little bit about, about that. It has a 10,000 milliamp hour battery, and I was able to get an average of eight hours of screen on time, which is absolutely amazing, considering that other laptops that are very similar get, you know, worse battery life. Even the T-Bow T-Book Air, it's less consistently eight hours of screen on time. You know, sometimes I'm even, even able to get around nine or 10 hours of screen on time if I turn the brightness all the way down, if I'm using it, you know, in pitch darkness. So that's actually super duper good. And that is definitely a selling point of this laptop. Very, very good battery life coming from the Onda Shama 21. All right, let's talk performance for the Onda Shama 21. And I gotta say that even though this has an EMMC instead of an SSD, this is still a very, very zippy little device. Compared to even other, you know, SSD devices, it actually comes pretty close, which I'm quite surprised with, you know, if I'm opening, let's say just a website, I'm very surprised with how fast it's able to open up stuff and just, you know, generally get used even in Google Chrome. And the other thing as well is that you can open multiple tabs and it actually gets pretty good. So those are very big selling points for this device, right? It's a very good, not only is it portable, but it's pretty fast also. And that's just using Google Chrome. Of course, it's gonna be great when it's doing, you know, stuff like um, Word. Um, the one thing I will say that is that this is probably not gonna be the greatest option for video editing, just because video editing is fairly heavy and you only have a 64 gigabytes EMM, so you're gonna have to put an extra SSD inside for it to work. Um, and the CPU here, the N3450, is not going to be very fast at rendering stuff. It's going to take forever, which is going to suck. Um, and the one thing that you have to be aware of also is that 
Um, this thing gets fairly warm whenever you're, you're doing anything that's more intense than just web browsing or Word. And I'll show you a little bit about Audacity, which is fairly CPU intensive, how fast it processes stuff compared to, let's say, a um, my desktop, which is an Intel Core i7-8700, which is obviously very, very fast compared to something like this. And we'll do a noise reduction on this and see how fast it takes. And that was actually pretty fast, but then again, that was a 14 second clip. So it should have been instant instead of taking one second. Let's try a normalize, see how that works. That was actually pretty good as well. Uh, fairly impressed. Let's try equalization. Not bad. So I gotta say that this is decent. If you wanna do basic stuff, you, want, you know, you wanna do GIMP, you wanna do Audacity, you, you wanna do basic video editing, maybe 720p, that should be okay also. And talking about gaming, I got to say that if you want to do some games, this is also not too bad, which I'm fairly surprised with. Um, the one thing about this is that, of course, it gets warm. It doesn't get super hot, but it does get warm. So there's so there's something that, that you definitely have to be aware of um, also. Um, it's not going to be playing, you know, PUBG. Um, you might be able to Fortnite at 480p, but really that's that's not a very good experience there also. In terms of connectivity, you have the Intel Wireless AC3165 that is very, very fast when you want to download stuff. It also has Bluetooth that works well. And finally, the webcam here is eh, it's pretty bad. So that's what it looks like. Um, I honestly don't really recommend it that much. Um, if you want to use it, sure, but really, nah. Um, it's enough for basic hangouts and stuff like that, and that's about it. In my opinion, the Onda Shama 21 is the perfect laptop for students who want to use this on campus, you know, Chrome is good, Word is good, um, everything there is decent. And the one thing that you have to be, be aware of is that there is no headphone jack. So as a student, you want to be fully Bluetooth before you get this or get an adapter for the USB-C port over here so that you can actually listen to stuff using a wired stuff. I don't really listen to um, stuff using like a wired headphones anymore. I'm fully Bluetooth and I love it so much. It's going to be my daily driver. No question about that. It's very portable, it's very useful, and it generally just works very well also. So what are your thoughts on the Xiaomi 21? Um, I know there are some Gemini Lake devices coming out soon, but to be honest, there haven't been really anything released. Um, and I really love this laptop, and I hope that there is a Gemini Lake, Gemini Lake version of this laptop. But yeah, uh, let me know what you think about the Onda Xiaomi 21, and would you have bought this device if it had a headphone jack? And would you buy it without a headphone jack? Let me know in the comments down below. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to hit subscribe and that little bell icon beside it to make sure you are notified of any new videos that come out on my channel. And I'll see you guys in the next one.